They were expensive. Fifteen millimeter sheet or uh five eighths was a hundred and twenty bucks. Yep. You paste paste paste. Yeah, I'm not going to have enough room for Three millimeters. Hold on, doing this wrong. Move outwards three. Now we move everything again. Move upwards three. Move the green three. Now we should have our spacing. Now I just grab these rows individually. Three, which is our cut line. I should have done this the other way. Three. Three. Okay, maybe, just maybe. I don't think so. But we also have to do the drawers to this area. These could be a little more complicated. <sighs> okay, um from here to here shape one fifty. Okay, that's a lot less. Push outwards 15. Make component, create. We could push this in a little bit more. I can play with that later, but need another one. Go there. And then again, I have to make. This piece here, this is just an approximation for now. That's 15. Make component, copy paste. I'll place it in front. Then what I can do is grab this corner, bring it all the way up to this corner, and we have our quarter inch piece. Component good now. Take this, I'll be paste. These are pretty big as well. So, yeah, it's a good thing I bought two full sheets of this quarter inch. But that also means that we are going to need almost the same amount of space. Gonna be some left over here, but just gonna have to be that way. Um, now these pieces, copy paste, rearrange them.
Apparently we'll do the long ones first. Three. Paste. Three. Paste. I can't paste that one there. So. Yep, I'm going to need another one. Another. Another. Another 15 millimeter panel. Oh, I have to. Hello there. How's it going? Good morning. I actually have some runners here. Let me just make sure I have the right spacing. Hello. Hey, where are you? Where are they? I know I have one here. Just a matter of finding it.
Sorry about that. Uh, I have now laid out my batteries in a way that I know which ones are used and which ones are not. I had them kind of just laying around, not really having a determined spot for for them. So I have more batteries ready to go. Let's put the vacuum hose. Today I'm rocking the sandals just because I really didn't want to come into the shop today. I'm just tired today. It's been a long couple of months. And this project has been pretty stressful. Okay, we can kind of move these, move this a little bit closer. Now let's just keep it at eight because, to be completely honest, they're like seven plus ish. So there's actually one that's a little wider than the others. Ah, <sighs> good morning, everybody. Let's get to this. Oh, I did not show you the headboard, how it turned out. I have it right here. Just give you a quick peek at the headboard. So we got our headboard done yesterday. I finished it like at 7 o'clock. Had everything done. Well, not seven. Sorry, I finished. What was it? Yeah, like at six, somewhere around there. I got back like at four, and I trimmed everything down, and we have our headboard done. So that's one thing less to worry about. Let's just get to milling. Gonna be doing some milling today. Let's zoom out a little bit because pretty sure I'm gonna be cut out of the frame. So we got these boards. Hopefully they stay straight. I'm hoping, please, please stay straight. Um and we can get on with our lives. Well that headboard's gonna get butted by the boards here. So let's move it out of the way. I have to do a little bit of sanding here because there was a little bit of tear out with the router bit. Everything else looked perfect except here. It's like, oh man, really? You were so close to greatness. This close. That was weird. I mean, it is pretty flat. Oh, this one has a big knot right there. This 
a knot right there. I think that I'm what I'm gonna do with this with this board this time around is I'm going to flatten it on two sides and then I'll just rip it down to size and continue on from there. Good here. This panel here as well is just getting on my nerves. Get out of here. Come on! What's going on? There's a lot to be removed there still. I could do a couple more passes, but we're good over here. Let's just give it one or two more passes and see where we are at.
I just love how this gets. Oh. Love how this forms resistance. I'm going to have to wax it again. I give it a little bit of wax. Because oh, this gets really smooth. When it gets really smooth, it sticks to the surface. Welcome in. Hello. Um, wax. Let's look for the wax. Wax should be back here. Yep. Let's put a little bit of wax on there. I still have not brought in my workshop uh, towels. Just have to use whatever we can get our hands on. Doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to wipe on, wipe off. Uh, there was a little buffer pad. I'll lurk for it later. Oh, I found the vapor rest. So that's a plus. Finally found the evapo rust in a auto parts store. I managed to get in, in their website and they actually started um, distributing to different auto parts here near near my area. So I don't have to wait on Amazon anymore. There has to be like some sort of embargo thing it's like if we sell it here you can't sell it to people from puerto rico because our whole economy would, would collapse <laughs> amazon would totally kill every small shop here because well if it's cheaper in amazon Basil's is going to take all the money. Hello there. Welcome in. Welcome in. I don't know if, they, if the speech chat lets me know if you got in after the pre-stream ad kind of thing or if it does it afterwards. So I don't know if I'm just saying hello out into the void. Nobody's actually hearing it, but I do say hello every time somebody jumps in. Okay, that feels nice and soft and silky and slippery, so we shall continue. Let's cover up the wax. It does have some volatile compounds, which... Keep it nice and moist. And let's give this, I think I could give it one or two more passes. I'm not going to use the whole board in specific. I don't want to use this end because this end has a major knot there. I'm pretty sure I'm not even going to need that part. So I could give it one more pass here to remove some of this. And then we can cut it down to approximate uh length well not yet i'll keep it there and i'll make a mark to know that i want to remove that end so yeah let's just keep running this through a couple more times just to get the usable part flat we can move to, to the other boards and my push paddles are over here Oh, 
That was a lot easier. And I think I can leave it like that. Let's let's uh, flatten out one of the ends here. So we have a 90 degree edge to work with. Okay, is this the right edge to work on? Let's see. Because... Mm, this is pretty straight, so... It doesn't really matter which side. We're getting there. One more pass. Oh. have two flat edges let's jump on to the next board let's put them flat on the floor here we'll work on them later on the planer And the paddles are over there. Let's grab the paddles. This one's uh, quite a bit wonky. Ooh, yeah. The blade on this one. <laughs> Was really off. It's a lot of bumps. It's very bumpy. Thank you. 
And it's twisted as well. So I might be planing in a twist or planing it out. One of the two. Let's see if this board is going to be usable. Former pass. Welcome in, welcome in. I'll be there in a second. Oh. Let's see here. Being from Peru, do you build a lot of domino tables? No, actually. <laughs> um, I haven't done domino tables, actually. Um... Usually people, if they want like a custom made domino table, they usually want one with like Puerto Rican flags and all that stuff. And I'm not a fan of that. I really am not. 
Uh, but I haven't had a commission yet for a domino table. I mean, I wouldn't mind making one, a very cool, nice one, but that's hasn't been my, my case. I've done mostly kitchen cabinets, and I'm currently trying to transition into furniture design and furniture making, which is what I always want to do, but uh, I still haven't gotten a commission for a domino table. But that could be a possibility that I could get somebody to ask for one at some point. Puerto Ricans are very proud. But they're like proud in the wrong way, I guess. Because they, 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 in some cases, they want to put the flag on everything. And... I find it infuriating every time I go to some hidden waterfall or or a nice piece of uh, a wilderness. I make a half an hour to an hour hike just to go there, enjoy the view, enjoy the area, maybe have a dip in the river, take photos and stuff. And there's always has to be some stupid graffitied on flag somebody put there. It's like. <laughs> It's, we're in Puerto Rico. No shit, dumbass. Of course we're in Puerto Rico. I don't need to be reminded every time I go everywhere that I live in Puerto Rico. It's like, Duh. I know I'm here. I don't need to be reminded about it. It's not like this is the most amazing place in the world either. Puerto Ricans can be tacky as hell sometimes. Super tacky. Yeah. One more pass. Oh. <laughs> so, oh, that there's a question mark there. Sometimes, uh, yeah, just take a look at what they call what we call because I am Puerto Rican and I live in Puerto Rico. The music that they dare to say, oh, this is indicative of Puerto Rico reggaeton, really. That's how you want to be remembered. That's what you want to be associated with you. Every time somebody says, oh, I'm from Puerto Rico. Oh, so you're one of them. One of them reggaeton guys. You like gasolina, huh? There might be some bug damage on this board. <clears throat> or a little bit of rot. I'll have to take a look at that. 
but we'll get there when we get there. We're nearing the point where I have to empty out the dust collector again. You know, other cultures, they prop up what makes them great. They want the world to know that they were the ones who made this. <laughs> we have reggaeton, apparently, because we didn't make anything else. Yes, we have, but somebody wanted to appeal to the cool kids. And I don't know if that actually passed. Like, they actually made it so that reggaeton is like, oh, this is our cultural heritage. Like, uh, I would keep it underground like it was. Uh, maybe I shouldn't clean this side yet. Let's see here. <sighs> Let's 
just that end over there. So I could give this a couple passes here. Now, I can try this again. Maybe it won't lift up as much. No, let's go back. Sorry about that. There we go. It is really hot. Let's see if I can open this window a little bit more. Because this is also kind of busted. I have to fix it. Oh, yeah, yeah. This finally the one. Oh, almost.
Okay. Just cutting these up along. Uh, cut these down first. Then afterwards, I'll start cutting them close to final dimensions. I'll rip them down on the table saw, see if there's going to be any twist or, or any tension relief or anything like that. I'm hoping that's not the case. I hope that they stay straight because I can't be buying more materials. There's no more money for that. Okay, this one's going to be a little more difficult because the, the board is a little bigger than the table. So I'm going to zoom out here because we're going to be working both on the jointer and on the bench here. So I have to do a pass. I have to plane, plane it down a little bit. Uh, the, the little bit that sticks out, I have to plane it out. And then pass it again, plane it down, pass it again, plane it down. Until we have a flat face. Hopefully, this one is pretty straight as well and doesn't give us too much work to move through the machine. I, I have to remove this. So let's turn this off. I forget that there's a screw here underneath. I have to untighten. It is a hex nut, hex head screw. So let's look for a hex keys. Not this one. This is too big. Yep. I think we're looking at a number five. No. Probably looking at a number 2.5. Let's see. No, that's, a, that's too small. Let's go with a four. seems to work let's just loosen this up i have to cinch it down or else the screw won't let go but this is also kind of in a very bad spot because if i drop the screw which is a small screw it's just gonna fall in there <laughs> and i'm not gonna have a good time A little oversight there. How would they do this any differently? I have no idea. I'm going to be honest. I have no idea. We have to take it out because the board is a lot wider. We need the space. But it's wider on one end and thinner on the other. So let's see how that goes. I am sweating like crazy. This is twisted. Wow. This is really twisted. Let's do this end first. That was weird.
Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Okay, we have our little lip here. We have to remove. Wherever we see a lip, we'll have to remove that. So, have our little edge here. Trim it off with a hand plane. So I found the evapor rust. I'm going to de-rust all of my hand tools. Get them prepped, looking good and ready. I don't have hold fasts, so.
Hello there. Welcome in. Coffee time. It's 11 o'clock. Oh, almost. Let's see. Did we get a redeem? Hold on. Oh, I didn't have this open. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, coffee time. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. Nerd next door. Um, let me just get through this board. I have to finish jointing one, the, the face. I'm going to join one of the edges and then we can do a coffee time. <clears throat> I'm sorry that I'm a little out of wind here, <laughs> uh, but we'll do coffee in a second. Let me just still need to pass this maybe one or two more times. This board was very twisted very twisted and it needs a lot of PLC you know what I think I'm not gonna waste too much time on this should just cut it down to the size and call it a day I'm not gonna Spend all morning here planing this down little by little. 
whittling it down. Oh, let's make some room here. Ooh. You know what? Let me go grab a glass of water. I have this ginormous ex extractor to pull air through the door and so I can feel a breeze. I don't feel <laughs> a breeze at all. It is pretty hot here today. I am soaking wet. <laughs> I did not see the XL Saga. I didn't hear it. Hold on. Yeah, this this stupid thing never really seems to to work. Where is it? Trigger fire. And then on this one. I love XL Saga. Um, I'll be right back. Let me just grab something to get some water and I'll be here in a second. Okay, we're back. Okay, let's do something. Um, I'm going to set the ripping blade so I can rip the, down this board to 8 inches. And then we can uh, set up coffee break. We'll have a coffee break, a little pick-me-up. And we, then we continue because I need to cool off a little bit. Extremely hot. Oh, wow. I really needed that. Oh. Let's put this away. I used to drink way more water than I do right now. I used to just, I could have guzzled that thing down one, one go. I needed that. I needed water. Ice cold water. Hmm. Let's grab our wrench. Set the ripping blade on. Because this wood does not like it when you use 
the wrong saw blade. It is very particular. It burns a lot. So let's, I forgot to bring in the pin. <coughs> the locking pin, sorry. For flawless rips, glue lines, and joints. Um, is that true? Yeah. So I finally found out what a quarter, two quarter. Uh, four quarter term means in uh woodworking. I would see people call like rough some lumber. Oh, I got this four quarter board. I'm like, what is that? Is that some special lingo for something? Is it like the type of cut or the grain orientation? What is it? And the thing is that lumber is the unit to determine <laughs> the size of the lumber is in quarters, like a quarter of an inch. So eight quarters is two inches, four quarters is one inch. It's not that I didn't think about maybe that's what it means. I just thought it was too stupid to be that. I was like, nah, it can't be. It can't be that they're talking about quarter inches. That would be dumb. Why well, call it a quarter? Why not just call it one inch or two inches or inch and a half? But it was pretty wrong. just interesting i guess yeah it's kind of funny um but yeah that's how it is you know it was yesterday days old when i found out and i'm like ah huh, okay yeah i know right it's like why even call it that just quarters and and i'm pretty sure they even, sawmills don't cut quarter inch boards that would be too thin well i mean if you're like in a in the plywood or veneer business but most sawmills just saw off a chunk of planks of wood i guess or at least that's my understanding of things
Okay, I'm about to do this, but I'm not entirely sure. Now, this edge is not flat. I could actually flatten this edge now and then run it through the table saw. Let's do that. You can put the guard back on. Um, you mean like you're talking about the dimension, like the the s dimensioning stuff, or are you talking about what I'm doing right now? Um, where's that thing? It's over here. Four millimeter? Yes. Ah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that was all about. I don't, I haven't figured, I haven't, uh, researched the the story behind that. There's, there's a big old bump here. Let's try to give ourselves a fighting chance here. Ooh, I'm, it's off by a little bit. Yeah. If Chance is here, gets here, we can ask him.
giving it a little head start. Remove some of that bump there in the middle because I don't don't want to start on the other side. So ah, let's see. Start the vacuum again. Vacuum is full. Okay. Oof. Again, we need to make room here. Let's move these super twisted boards. Ow. I'll just probably end up using those for, for this part of the project, for the bed, because they're too twisted. I'm going to have to plane them down even thinner. So they'll probably just end up being part of the the slats of the cage because they twisted really badly this project i am so done with it i really want to get this done get it over with get it out of here Next crib, I'm going to charge $5,000. I don't care. If they say yes, then they're 
pretty crazy, but I don't know if I'll still do it, though. <laughs> to be honest, it's... Cribs might not be the thing for me. Montessori beds, that's a different subject altogether. Montessori beds are easy to build. I can get them knocked out in no pr no time. But this bed has been quite the challenge. For a second there I thought that would that would be that was um still warped. <sighs> oh, forgot I said I was gonna do coffee time. <sighs> we'll get there. Give me a second, let me just get through this. Really need to get through this. Now we can get through with finishing up planing this board. Which I'm going to do real fast here because it is now doable without having to go too much back and forth.
Okay. We have our four boards planed out, jointed. Um, I'm going to take a short coffee break. Turn off all these machines and get the coffee equipment ready. So if you guys want to have a little bit of a coffee break with me, you're more than welcome to. Just going to brew a cup of coffee. Oof. And I'll see you in a little bit. See you soon.
Okay, we're back. There we go. Got everything on here. Oh, I need got I need to add water to the kettle. Because we haven't used the kettle in some time. So uh give it a quick wash. Still a little dusty from workshop but i can wash that off later i'm gonna be rocking the santo domingo water i mean coffee this time we're just gonna go straight for a boil uh i'm not going to play around too much with the settings because to be completely honest this coffee grind and and roast is not meant it's it's more meant for your average Joe kind of coffee maker, so we'll probably just boil water, add it to the coffee, and call it a day. They don't play around with, oh, how much do I need for this or that? It's like, no, just get it done. Get it over with. Oh, add a ton of sugar. <laughs> And enjoy it then. It's like, okay, well, we'll have no sugar on ours. We'll just do straight up coffee and we're just going to add, I think, 18 grams would be okay. Let's do 20. Because if you're doing like a pour over, more like 20 grams. You can add how much you want. You go 20 on the dot. Not the best storing mechanism either. Ziploc bag and Nothing else. Got my little stirring stick, got the filter, got the cup. Should be good. Am I missing anything? No, this is a much more simpler setup. I'm not going to grind the coffee. So we're just going to brew it. Making a lot of noise. I might have to descale my espresso machine again. It's making some hammering noise. And it could be... Either there's a valve that's not working correctly, or it could just be that there is some scale on the heating element and it makes cavitation bubbles. So it, it makes a, a, a better surface for the bubbles to form when it's really hot. So it makes loud, violent bursts of, of, of air inside the, the chamber. So makes these weird hammering sounds and I've descaled it not so long ago but apparently I have to descale it again plus I'm using RO water which shouldn't uh, allow for that to happen I guess I'm wrong what are you oh this is from the That's from something else. That's from the little wrench holder thing that it brought. I brought. I bought some Allen wrenches, and they have this little thing that you could use to to grab onto to twist something that's heavier. It's not like just a thin metal. 
but that broke off it just blew off into three different pieces and i'm like oh great okay we're at 86 89. Usually I would cut the heat like at 92. But we'll try like full extraction, boiling water, see how that tastes. Experimenting with this Dominican Republic coffee. Should be out of hunger already. Come on. We're in 99C. I'll, I'm going to call it close enough. There we go. 100. Hundred milliliters of water. Turn this off. I'll need that on. What I'm going to do as well is I'm I'm just going to extract this 100 grams of coffee. I'm not going to do the full 200 grams like I've been doing before. I've been diluting it, but I'm really not. That kind of guy to dilute water, uh, coffee. I like my coffee strong, so. Plus, I can finish it faster. Looking at 130. Press. We're done. <laughs> Let's see how this tastes. Uh, after coffee, I'm going to go take a break. Um, anyway, I'm going to take a break and I'll see if I can cut these somewhat close to final dimension, see how they behave. Hopefully they stay straight. They don't like go squiggly line on me. Oh, I'm really praying that it doesn't because if it does, I'm just going to... Have an aneurysm.
Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, when they mark it in their bag that to enjoy their coffee, you must add a tablespoon of sugar for every cup of coffee. It's like, yeesh. Is this coffee or is this granulated tar? Which one is it? I'm actually going to have to pull out the sugar for this. So, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Yeah, there's no way I'm drinking this without sugar. And my sugar is multi-tonal, as you can see. Because <laughs> uh, we thought we were buying just regular white sugar, and it turns out to be kind of very, very light molasses. It still has a little bit of molasses on it, so it's a little yellowish. I'm not going to add a tablespoon. If anything, I'm going to add a teaspoon. That's about it. I don't, don't like adding a lot of sugar to my coffee. So, yeah, this is just basically our... Granulated tar marketed as a dessert because if you add this much sugar to your drink, it is dessert. Ooh. Oh, it doesn't taste like much of anything. Uh, a little bit more water. Maybe if it's thinned out, I can... Yeah, sugar overpowers everything now. Makes it more drinkable, but doesn't make it better. It's just... Sugar right now. It's okay with sugar. The in laws drink a lot of this, and I make it in a gre uh, not Greca, it's a mocha pot, it's an electric mocha pot that they have. And on a mocha pot, Coffee tends to taste different, so maybe the AeroPress is not meant for this, this coffee style, but Mocha Pot, I think I've, I have good memories of this coffee with the Mocha Pot. It, it gets kind of like dark chocolatey, but again, it's like a very small portion and with just a, a little bit of sugar, as always. Well, I was trying to drink this without sugar, but I don't get that chocolate taste without the sugar, which is uh, disheartening, I guess. There are coffees that just taste of dark chocolate, and it's really good. And it smells like dark chocolate, but not this one. I don't, I don't, it has a very distinct smell, 
you smell it and you say, oh, that's Cafe Santo Domingo. But I can't really pinpoint it right now. At least I haven't sat down and said, I want to know what does this smell like and try to think about something. But it does have a very peculiar smell. Oh, okay. Coffee break seems to be a little quiet today, but that's okay. I know there are a lot of people lurking. And there are a lot of people doing their own things. That's okay. But I am having a really, really hot morning here. I am, I don't know, kind of flustered by it. Um, I feel slow, sluggish, and I am super sweaty and wet. So... <laughs> I think that I'm going to take a quick break. I'm just going to sit down for a while and, and cool off, dry out, and then I'll jump back into the shop. So in any case, we can raid out. Let's see here. Who do we have available today? We could jump into Timber and News. Uh, stream... Let's see, if, is there anybody else? There's this guide I don't follow anymore. Just... Let's... Oh, God. Go. Shut up. There we go. And let's see, is there anybody on... There's, you're not live, you're live, 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 live. We can go to Timber Anew, right over to Timber Anew's uh, stream. So I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys. I will be here tomorrow. I will stream on Saturday, and I will stream uh, early. So I will see you then. Take care, and hopefully by tomorrow we can do most of the 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 dimensioning for the 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 frames that we need and i will see you then take care and bye